Hi guys, welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today guys, today we have the second video in a week's time. So, boom. How about that more videos than I've recorded in the last month? And today I am coming at you with a single handy dandy note card with the crap. Uh, um it's the I can't believe I haven't read these books tag, is that right? Like I mean that's that's a little dramatic because like the answers are not going to be like I can't believe I haven't read it! And it's more like, these are books I haven't read that I want to. Tag. I, I, the, I, it's the, I can't believe it's not bother tag. I can't believe it's not bother. I was tagged in this by Alex over at Tall Guy Reads, who has a channel that you should be watching if you are not. So I will have a link down in the description to his channel, and you should go subscribe immediately. So, without wasting any more time. Let's, it's like categories of books, and I'm going to say a book that I want to read that I haven't read, and I can't believe I haven't read it! I can't believe it's not bother. Number one, a classic. So, what is a classic that I can't believe I haven't read? I can't believe it's not bother. There's a bunch of classics I haven't read, because classics tend to be a drag. Um, there are not, not all of them, like I really like like Catch-22 and Animal Farm and, and To Kill a Mockingbird, I like a lot of those. Um, I'm gonna have to say the super, like, the super basic slash chuggy answer, which is uh, Count of Monte Cristo. I've seen this answer come up a lot with people, and it's because a lot of people haven't read it, because the thing's so freaking long. The audiobook is like 50-something hours, which is what I'll have to do. I'm not certain that I'm gonna be able to read that book physically. I will probably like do both because I have a copy. Um, so I'll probably do do both of them. I want to read Count of Monte Cristo. I've wanted to read Count of Monte Cristo ever since I saw the movie back in high school with um, Jim Caviezel and Guy Pierce, which I love. Um, and it's supposed to be even better. Like the, the revenge part of, of the movie is supposed to be much more fleshed out in, in the book, which is excellent. Now of the audiobook, if you have listened to the audiobook, there's one uh, narrated by John Lee, but then there's another one narrated by William somebody. I want to say Bill, Bill somebody. And I did some research and I can't, and I've listened to the, the, the samples of both and both are really good. So if you've had an experience or if you've experienced both, I don't know who's listening to that, <laughs> listen to that book twice, but if you've heard anything, please let me know um, so I can decide which narrator I want to go with when I do that. So that's the classic book that I want to read. It's a classic, it's a revenge tale of someone taking revenge for being unjustly locked up. You get them, Dantes. Anyway, fake boosh. Number two, fiction. So there's a question asked about genre. Genre. That's also fiction. But I, so I'm assuming this means like fiction that is not fantasy and science fiction, so I'm gonna do fiction that's not historical fiction, fantasy, science fiction, whatever. Uh, I guess general fiction, I suppose. And this is going to be The Secret History by Donna Tart. So I don't know a ton about The Secret History other than I have had people suggest for, to me to read it because it's about, it's about like, I think it's about some snooty classics department and the professor gets the kids involved in like some weird crap. I don't know and don't tell me, but I do have students or former students who have read it and said that bits and pieces of it, like descriptions, remind them of like the core, uh, like hardcore officer Latin uh, group. And so I want to read it just to see if there's any parallels other than I've been told that I am not, I am not the weird professor, though sometimes maybe he says things that are, I don't know. I need to read it. If you've been watching me for a while, will I like Secret History or will I think it insists upon itself and that it's terrible? Uh, I do like, I don't read enough books that have classic references. A lot of times they tend to be pretentious and it makes me mad. But, who knows, maybe I'll enjoy this one. Fake boosh. Uh, number three, nonfiction. This one was much easier. I have a bunch of nonfiction books that I haven't read yet, most of them about Greece and Rome. But I'm going to, in particular, pick uh, Dividing the Spoils by Robin Waterfield. Dividing the Spoils is a book about the the Diadachi Wars, the wars of Alexander's successors after Alexander the Great died. When Alexander the Great died, like what an idiot. Rather than having some bleeding actual plan for succession, they ask him who he's gonna leave who he wants to leave his empire to, and he says, to the strongest. What an idiot. So instead the man conquers like the Persian Empire all the way down to India, and then it all blows up because all of his friends and allies 
divided it up and fought amongst themselves. But there's not a ton written about the Diadachi. Like, I don't know why. I, I think we lost a lot of the, the primary sources of this. So there, there are far fewer books written about the, the time after, immediately after Alexander the Great, than there are about him himself. But some of the supporting cast in the Alexander story, like his evil friend Cassander, uh, and uh, Antipater, I'm sure it's Antipater, it's freaking Antipater, and Antigonus One-Eye, and, and his sons, and then freaking the Eighth Perdiccas. Sounds super fascinating. I definitely love reading about succession wars. That's part of why I like, you know, political fantasy is wars of succession. So, yeah, Dividing the Spoils by Robin Waterfield. Fake boosh. Number four, genre book. Genre. So I'm taking this to be fantasy or, or sci-fi. And this answer may surprise you. I got a bunch of books that I want to read, but I can't believe I haven't read it. I can't believe it's not bother. I'm going to say Way of Kings by Brando Sando, book one of the Stormlight Archive. And here's why. One, that book's flipping long. It's so long. It is so long. But two... So I've read Mistborn Era 1, I've read part of uh, the Alloy of Law, and I like I really liked Mistborn Era 1, but it hasn't solidified Brandon Sanderson as like an all-time must-read, die-hard favorite author of mine. And since Stormlight seems to be his most popular series, and the one that most people insist that I will really like, I would like to read Way of Kings to see if it, it does indeed solidify Sando as like, I got to know. I'm sold. Let me read all about this Cosmere. And I, look, I promise you, this is the vow that I take unto you. Right now, on camera, on September 7, in the year of our Lord, 2022, or, as the Romans would say, seven days before the Ides of September, I swear, I will never say the word implications if I read Brandon Sanderson's book, because I am counting down. I have my bingo card all made made up. I'm taking tick marks of as soon as Lost Metal comes out. How many times people are going to say the word implications? How often do you say implications on a regular basis? Not as often as you would think. But anytime we're talking about Cosmere, oh, the implications for the Cosmere. Stop. Stop. Please. Stop. So... I want to read Way of Kings to see if, indeed, um, Stormlight is is right in my bailiwick as well as, you know, I, I would love, I would love to join the, the rabid horde. Like, I really do. Like, I want to like something that everyone else likes also instead of these freaking crappy books that no one reads. No one reads K.J. Parker or Daniel Abraham. Like, I want to, I want to read those books. So, here's hoping that I will love Way of Kings but probably not until the year the short book is over. Fake boosh. Number five, book you've owned the longest but haven't read. I can't believe I haven't read this book yet. I can't believe it's not bother. So I'm not going to say the actual book that I've owned the longest and haven't read because that's probably like one of my old um, like textbooks or like textbook adjacent books from college like um, the Sun Yat-sen biography or the, the Mao A Life biography that I haven't read all of, uh, something to do with East Asian politics, that books that I got while I was, you know, studying, and that I've read part of and haven't, haven't finished. Those are probably the books that I've owned the longest that I haven't read. So instead, I'm going to go with the books on BookTube that I've had the longest that I haven't read, and that is probably The Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bejold. In my very first video with, you know, my handheld camcorder and bad sound and terrible lighting, with a single bookshelf against the wall in my bedroom that took me eight hours to edit because I didn't know anything. I had literally had to learn editing software. I said I had Curse of Chalion on my TBR to read during the fall or whatever. And I never did. And I just got in BookTube and I ended up reading crap other people are reading. And I had never heard anybody reading Curse of Chalion, but now I know several people, including Zara, whose tastes often align with me, uh, says it's masterful. And so I desperately want to read Curse of Chalion. But I don't know when I'm going to get to it. But that is the book that's, I think, been on my TBR the longest um, that, I, that I should read. And then finally, tag three people who can do this fun and easy tag. So I'm going to tag 
Dr. Philip Chase. Because really, you, you didn't come to, to listen to me talk. You really came to listen to Philip talk. So Philip's tagged. And then I'm also going to tag Leslie over at the Nerdy Narrative because I love Leslie's tags and Leslie is a, is a tag machine. I'm also going to tag Jake at Jake Bishop because Jake Bishop loves chaos. He is my brethren in entropy. So hopefully, uh, I'm interested to see. I think they'll have interesting answers. Um, Leslie reads a wide array of stuff. Philip is going to say something for like the nonfiction. It's going to be like the metaphysical particles of narrative structure combined with shades of the color wheel on tone. That's what Philip's going to say. And then Jake is going to add some kind of uh, aggressive insult about Long Price Quartet or something else that I like in here. Those are my predictions. So at any rate, guys, I'm so happy I was able to get a second video out. So, so yeah, pick any one of those questions and give me your answer down in the comments. As always, information about my Patreon and uh, Discord is down in the description, and I'll see you next time, guys. Terminus potions, tablets and lotions. I can't believe it's not bother.